Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Digimon TCG Regional from the UK Games Expo at the lovely NEC just outside of Birmingham over in the UK. This is of course the big Digimon in-person event in the UK, the first one we've really had. So it was nice to see so many players, we've got a couple hundred players here just over, having a whole bunch of play. And we're seeing in this meta what we expected to see in the BT8 meta. And, and this is going to be carrying on this game. What we've got is yellow security control or hybrid, call it what you will, against yellow hybrid. So we're going to be seeing a lot of hybrid cards. We're going to be seeing a lot of recovery. But I have made a little request to the players because we're going to be seeing so much adding and taking away. For this round, we've got to die on each of the players' security. So they're going to be changing that to show us how many security cards they've got. And that, all oh, they're even using, there we go. So that's going to make things nice and easy. Because last round, we couldn't always see it perfectly, but we're getting better, ladies and gentlemen. Things are looking good. And we are rolling. So we got Kyle on the top. we got Lewis on the bottom and we've got a lovely organized play events <laughs> play them out there with your yellow sleeves we know how many security cards we got we are off and we've got an uppermon being hatched and a yellow memory boost which is an interesting first card it's not what we usually see turn one but it lets you get a a Digimon from the top four cards, and then it goes in as a delay, gains you two memory later. What this really tells us is that Lewis doesn't have much, because you really want, turn one, you want to get a level three, exactly like we see from Kyle there. We want to get a level three onto that egg. That's exactly what we're looking for. So Kyle here's got a much better start. We now see a TK Takaishi coming down. Now that's going to get you a yellow card, well, any card from your security, but if it's yellow, you get to recover. But it's not real recovery. You're really just replacing the card that you took. So you know, Kyle's going to go from five to five. Oh, we see that rapid mom. That rapid mom, we've already seen it on stream so far today. That thing is harsh. It's got armor purge. And when you did evolve, you suspend one of your opponent's Digimon for each team you have in play. And then three of your opponent's Digimon lose 5,000 power. It has come out a couple of times and it has been big pretty much every time. So we're over to Kyle here. Now we know we've got the, oh my goodness, Lewis is, Lewis does not have much here at all. We did see the evolution into the Patamon, but that's the one that he grabbed off of the memory boost. We now see Terry Kamiya come into play, and don't get me wrong, that's a nice little card. That's going to give you an extra memory when you add a card to your security stack, which we know Yellow is looking to do. But the fact of the matter is, it's not what you're looking for. And, you know, Kyle, you can see a little bit more frantic in the play there. It's almost like Kyle's going, you know what? I've got this. I know what I'm doing here. So we saw Zoe Oromoto coming down, also searches the security. And we see a Cody Hina coming down. So lots of tamers coming down. And this is starting to look very, very nice indeed. We've got, you know, three tamers out and we've got that Patamon. We still don't have anything really putting pressure on, though, on either side of the board. And I do think that's kind of interesting. Both players here are just not really putting much pressure on at all. We're flicking back and forth in terms of turns. Kyle's got all of those tamers. There's a Patamon in the breeding, in the raising area. Lewis has got Patamon in the raising area and a tamer and a Patamon out. But there's nothing really happening in terms of attacking or putting on pressure. I mean, certainly Kyle seemed to have the better start, but, you know, by now we'd be expecting to see things like, well, Rapidmon as an example. So, you know, we're not getting full value out of Rapidmon, but it does at least take out the Patamon. And it takes out a security and survive, but it is a Zoe or a Moto. Of course, these hybrid cards, what you're really looking for is, you know, trying to make sure that you get those taken without ready to digivolve. So if your opponent attacks into the security and gives you one for free, that's a huge advantage for you. And of course, because it is Zoe Oromoto, you get to go and grab that card out of your security. So, so far, all looking fairly good. So, what have we got from Kyle here? You've got the Jet Silphim on in hand, and then we're going. So... We've got Rapidmon on Kyle's side of the board. Lewis has nothing out. But one of the things to remember about these hybrid decks, when you've got no Digimon out, remember all those Tamers could turn into Digimon in a heartbeat. Now, what we actually see here is Eden's Javelin. Let's you draw a card and lower one of your opponent's Digimon by a thousand for each card you have in hand. And it's really good for taking out smaller Digimon like Rapidmon. It's great. Going after a 15,000 power level 7. Probably not going to happen often if we're honest with ourselves, but something like a Rapidmon is going to go down pretty gosh darn quickly. But now we get up straight into Jet Silphimon. That has got the recovery. So now we're up to six 
security. Of course, this is one of those decks that can go well above the starting point of five. And this is good. This is exactly what Carl's looking for. Swing with a Jet Sylphie Mom. Is it going to survive? It is. But it's going to give your opponent a TK to Kaishi, which, of course, then has that skill letting you grab a card from your security. So, I mean, all this, and it is a Jet Silvermon as it happens. So what we see here, you know, a lot of the time we see Jet Silvermon going down straight away, but it's recovered in security and it's taken out of security. So you're swapping a Digimon for a two security swing. That, that's fine. That is a good way to go about doing things. When Jet Silvermon survives after doing that, you know, Kyle right now has got to be thinking he's completely in the driver's seat here. Of course, both these players have started 2-0. and Good for them. On a bit of a tear. And this is it's one of the top decks in the format, right? It's absolutely the case. Now, here's an interesting one. A second yellow memory boost. And Kyle can stash them. They can both be activated at any point after this turn, giving you an extra two memory. So Kyle can at some point have a bit of a burst for four memory, and that's kind of huge. Because, you know, generally we see turns starting with three memory-ish. That's about the average we tend to see. If you can boost that up to seven, that's going to give you options. And now Lewis has got to play the rest of this game knowing that knowing that Carl's got those options. Now, of course, Lewis has a yellow memory boost of his own there, which is quite nice. But it means both these players are potentially going to be able to do a bit more than it might seem. Oh, speaking of which, we see the yellow memory boost activated. That's two more memory coming up for Lewis. And we see a Rapidmon coming down. Oh, Rapidmon is one of those Digimon we're going to be seeing all weekend. Now, annoyingly, of course, you know, you can get up to three Digimon off the board. That's not an option here. But it does at least get the only Digimon there. Rapidmon... You know, it might only be a level four, but there's a reason Rapidmon got one of the super rare slots in the set. It's because it really is that darn good. You know, Magnamon is another one of those armor Digimon we've seen that just sees a huge amount of play and for very, very good reason. Rapidmon is great. So, once again, we've seen large hand sizes built up because players are drawing a whole bunch of cards. And this is... You know, it, it's kind of interesting. Both players have got very similar setups. You know, Kyle's got a couple of Tamers. Lewis actually got four Tamers and a Rapidmon. So, you know, Kyle's got the extra memory to fire off, which is great. Right now, I suppose Lewis does have the better board setup. Now, we do see one of those memory boosts being activated to play another TK Takaishi. And here's one of the great things about all of this, you know, things like TK Takaishi and Zoe Yoromoto that, that let you search your security. The thing is... You're recovering a lot. So you're putting a lot of cards on top of your security. And then you've got cards that search them. So it's, it's not just that you're recovering. It's also that you're actually giving yourself access to extra search options, finding these cards more easily. It turns it into a really consistent deck. You've got to play Tamers because it's a hybrid deck. But it's why you see cards like Zoe Yoromoto and TK Takaishi seeing quite as much play as you do. Because when, you know, when the whole goal of your deck is to pile cards into your security, having cards that can search them is huge. But we see another card coming down here. I want to say that's Eden's Javelin. It was played very quick. But I think it is. I think that is Eden's Javelin. Regardless, it did get rid of the Rapidmon on that side of the board. So we're seeing a similar kind of thing from both players. Lots of Tamers coming out. Option cards, you know, getting rid of the Digimon. No one's really able to build anything up so far. Neither player is really building up a bit of a board presence. But remember, Hybrid, you can have burst turns. You could potentially get, you know, three or four Digimon out at once. There's your Kazimon. Now we got a Digimon out. We draw a card. Is there a Jet Silphimon? That would be huge. There is. And it is. Draw a card. Recover a card. And then, of course, you could potentially start trying to whittle away that security. And that's what we've seen with a lot of Jet Silphimon, you know, in the first few rounds here. It's get the Jet Silvermon out, recover, take out one of your opponent's security, and cross your fingers. Now, this isn't the scariest deck to attack into, because there's so many Tamers, there is a decent chance you're going to hit a Tamer when you attack into the security. But even then, you're giving your opponent an extra Tamer and an extra recovery. And this is an interesting thing about a Phantomon Fall Down mode. It's a dual color Digimon that gives you a skill if you've got a purple Digivolution card and a skill if you've got a yellow. 
We're not playing purple, but the yellow skill is recovery. So we saw Lewis there. We had recovery on Jet Silvimon. Then we had recovery on a Phantom on fall down mode. And we're going from free security right up to five in a heartbeat. And, you know, this is why I've asked the players to use dice to keep hold of their security so we can actually track how much are there and what's coming out. So Panamon's coming out here, comes out of that raising area. That's rather lovely. Gives a Digimon to use. And, I mean, Kyle here doesn't really need to rush. He's got six security. Now, to be fair, Lewis has got five. But there's enough here that you can take a, a turn or two to build up if you like. But that Afanamon fall-down mode, that is looking a bit awkward. That is one which is starting to look a little bit menacing. And, you know, it's got a Digivolution skill and a Deletion skill. So while it's sitting there, it's essentially a vanilla 12,000 power Digimon. Oh, and is Rapidmon? No, Rapidmon's not able to get the Deletion. It suspends, and it loop minuses 5,000 power. Is that enough? Oh, I think... Is he got it? I think he has got it. Yes, absolutely does. So... It took a few skills all built together, but Cody Hina, when one of your Digimon with two or more colors attacks, you can minus 2,000 to a Digimon. So you take the minus 5,000 from Rapidmon, the minus 2,000 from Cody Hina, that actually took a Phantomon fall down mode down to a 5,000 power Digimon, and then Rapidmon could just swing and knock it out or delete it as normal. Uh, it took a little bit of work. But that was really good. And that was what Kyle needed. Like I said, Kyle doesn't need to go aggressive here. Having that six security gives you time. What you really needed to do was to take care of that threat. And that is exactly what happened there. That was really, really well done. That was exactly what he was looking to do. And this is, you know, we're going to see this in a yellow hybrid mirror match. We're going to see a lot of back and forth. We're going to see lots of recovery from both players. We've not seen a game go to time here. This could end up being the first one. Because there's so much recovery, if one player doesn't rush ahead, we're in for longer games here. Now, the good news is we get a rapid one coming up. It's not quite enough to delete yet. Could swing the rapid one into the rapid one and delete it. Or could potentially, if there's, a, if there's another skill. Yeah, so we do just see the rapid one swinging into the rapid one to delete it. And both players seeming content at this stage to just kind of go for it. Now, we do see Jet Silphamon coming out here. That's going to give an extra little recovery, which is really rather nice. That's, that's quite cool. And now, I mean, is Lewis finally going to build up a little bit of a board? Is Lewis finally going to do the thing that has eluded both players for <laughs> the first, what, 10, 15 minutes of this round? And actually build up a little bit of a board, maybe. So Zephyrmon comes out. Jet Silphimon comes out. That is some more <laughs> recovery. Between Jet Silphimon, Reinforced Memory Boost, the Phantomon Fall Down Mode. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're like 10, 15 minutes into this game. And both players have one more security than they started with. That's a level we're looking at here. Okay. And again, you know, both players have got free Tamers. Both players have got Jet Silphimon. Lewis has got the setup here, but only really because of the Rapidmon. But then, oh, and here we see. So now it's always been like, kind of like a little bit of a reverse. Now we see Kyle with the Afanamon fall down mode as we see that dice flicking over to seven security. Oh, and so at some point, a player is going to need to go on a little bit of a run here. Start stringing some attacks together. Because as it stands... And it's quite upsetting. Both players have ended up with Uppermon as their, as their choice here. Of course, we do often see Cupermon played. And both players, I think both players are playing Cupermon. Or at least Lewis is, Lewis is playing one. And that gives you a draw when you attack if you've got five or more security. Uppermon is when you've got three or fewer. And both players are miles away from that as it stands at the moment. So now we see Rapidmon. And... We've actually got a very similar thing going on here. We've got, it seems to be, we've attacked into the security, and we've hit a Zoe Oromoto, which has then got and got a Zephyrmon. And then that's obviously then going to get replaced. So we've got six security there in total. And we see another attack into it, but it's an Eden's Javelin. 
Oh, and that's going to be enough to take out the Rapid Mon. Minus 1,000 to a, a Digimon for each card in your hand. That's easily enough. And this is... This is, well, this is Yellow Hybrid, right? This is what Yellow Hybrid does. It's got lots of little tricks for picking off, especially smaller. Digits. Oh, look, it's Eden's Javelin. And that's enough to take out the Abandon on full down mode. Oh, my goodness. We've got some giant hand sizes here. And look, at this point, I'm going to have to admit it. Earlier on the stream, I said, well, Eden's Javelin is good for taking out smaller Digimon. It's not so great for your, your bigger Digimon. Well... Turns out, if you can build up a big enough hand, it's good enough for anything. And we've got... I think we've officially got a bit of a cagey game going on here. Both players are tripping their tamers. They've both got four tamers out. But trying to keep a Digimon on the field, trying to actually whittle down those security, trying to really get much of anything going on for more than a turn in a row, it's not working for either player. So, Kyle here. You've got a Zephyrmon. We're bringing out the... Palamon. Obviously, we've got all kinds of tamers adding memory at the start of turns and, you know, making so you actually got a decent amount of memory. We've got giant hand sizes from both players because of all the draw, because of all the evolution and so on. And it's just... Oh, we see Rapidmon coming out. Now, Rapidmon's a minus 5,000. So it's not going to take it out yet. But if we attack into the security, we can then use Cody Hina's skill to minus the last 2,000 while taking out a security card. It is a yellow memory boost, which goes into the battle area. So that's a very tricksy way to get the KO, but it works perfectly. You minus 5,000 with Rapidmon. Cody Hina will minus 2,000, but it only does so on an attack. So you have to swing into the security, hope you survive. And then Cody Hina will then allow you to minus 2,000 as you do so. So you get the deletion while taking out a security card. But, you know, we still see both players with five security remaining. And there's like two Digimon total out from both players. Three, if you include the Patamon in Lewis's raising area. So... You know, with 28 minutes remaining here, we've seen some fast games. You know, the the blue Imperial Dramon deck, the blue green, I should say, that we've seen a lot on stream already. That is a deck that is not going to play super long games. It is racing to the end. Lots of jamming, lots of unsuspending, playing Digimon for free, lots of extra attacks, basically. That's going to play some quick games. That's not going to go to time very often. Whereas here, we've got your yellow decks, you're recovering, you're picking off these Digimon, using those skills, your Rapidmon, your Cody Hina, etc. And what you're doing here is just kind of almost elongating the game, trying to frustrate your opponent until they've not got much left. And then you can kind of build it up a little bit in the later game. As it stands at the moment, that's just not happening. So we do see a Salomon coming out here. Another Digimon that can get some recovery, or this time on a deletion. Although Salomon only recovers if you've got three or fewer security cards remaining. And I think it's fair to say we're, um, we're a little way away from that at this stage. <laughs> I don't think is unfair. So, it really is down. I've said it a couple of times, I'm sorry, but this is where we are. It is just down to whether anyone can put on continued pressure. Your Patamon comes out. That's rather lovely. Are we going to swing with Patamon? Are we going to try and build up to some bigger Digimon? Which would be quite a nice thing to do. What's the play here? There's some thinking going on from Lewis. I mean, eventually, somebody's going to run out of stuff. Eventually, somebody is going to have to stop recovering. Somebody is going to not have the Rapid Mon to try and take out those smaller Digimon. One of these players is going to start running out of answers at some point. I mean, we don't really see Deck Out as a thing in Digimon at all. Could this be one of the rare occasions? It's not really a thing, but the longer this goes on, and of course, at this stage, it's really important to know, we're at a best of three. Ties are possible. And honestly, at this stage, whoever wins this game is going to be at a huge advantage in the match as a whole. Do you see Yellow Memory Boost being activated now? We see Eden's Javelin coming down. And that is going to draw a card. And that is, I mean, it's easily enough to take out the Rapid Mon, which has got to be the one you're going after here. So that's kind of amazing. And here's the thing. If this game ends... We could well be, well, I mean, it's going to end at some point, one would imagine, but it's probably going to be when we're more than halfway through the round. 
which means that the player that loses round game one is very, very unlikely to win the match as a whole, and they're really going to be playing for a draw at that point. And the player that wins game one is at a massive advantage. You know, if you win game one and game two doesn't finish, hey, you've won the, you've won the, you've won the series. You know, you've won the thing. One game finished, you won it. Hey, we're good. That's um, that's a huge advantage, quite frankly. That is a huge advantage. So at this stage, it really is up to you know. But the it, game one becomes super, super important when they go on this long. It is so much more important than a regular game because you're probably not finishing out as a whole. You're probably not finishing out this best of three. Not unless one player just has a horrendous start in one game. Although, to be fair, the stars in this game weren't amazing. So we see Salomon coming down in the raising area, goes and draws a card. That's rather lovely. We have got a Zephyrmon out in play here. And, you know, because hand disruption is not a huge thing for most decks, it's certainly not for this deck, it means that, you know, those huge hands are basically going to stay around. It means that all of those cards you've got are going to become options as you go through the game. It means that you've got access to so many more things. But do you have the right things? Like, what, what's going on at this stage? Like, what's Kyle's plan? So here comes a, a Patamon. I mean, do you just try going wide at this stage? Because potentially Kyle's going to start next turn with three Digimon. Problem is, if you go wide against a, a deck like Yellow Hybrid, you end up in a situation where you're constantly losing Digimon to take out security, which then just get recovered anyway, and you can start running out of, you know, your smaller Digimon, which makes life super awkward in the late game. What you want is to build up something big that can take out multiple security at once. But that's not really what this deck does. Now, if either player could get a Suzanumon out, then you've got security attack plus two, and that's kind of awesome. And, you know, Suzanimon is in both deck lists. We've got two there for Lewis and one for Kyle. That would be a big turning point at this stage. If either player could actually get as far as getting a Suzanimon out, that would be pretty big. Because that's the kind of Digimon that could start taking out two cards in a turn and potentially stay around for a little while because it's so difficult to actually take out. Now, we do see an attack with Zephyrmon. It hits a Rapidmon and goes down. We now see an attack with Jet Sylphimon. It is a reinforced memory boost. Now, that's actually kind of huge because it goes into the battle area as a security card, but it doesn't get you the recovery, and you're only allowed to play one of them. So, actually seeing it come out as a security, sure, is going to be free memory for your opponent at some point of their choosing, but it's not getting the recovery, and that's a really big deal. So, Kyle finally putting on a bit of pressure here, has actually put Lewis down to free security remaining. Now, we see a Kazamon coming out here. Have we got a Jet Sylphimon to follow it up? It's generally what we tend to see. I must confess, I've not been counting. I don't know how many he's even got access to at this stage. There can't be a huge amount of them left. We've seen a couple come down. But now, potentially, we've not got... Oh, now, with a Kazemon attack... Oh, now it's into an Eden's Javelin, which is not ideal. Something's going down. It's a Jet Sylphimon. If Kyle can get one more Digimon out, there's potentially game on board next turn, assuming Lewis has no recovery, and that is a big assumption in this deck. But we finally see Kyle actually putting on enough pressure here that we could see this game ending in the next couple of turns. Now, admittedly, with the amount of recovery out there, we could see this all turning around in a heartbeat, and we could be back to five security each very, very quickly. But Kyle started to put himself in a position where the end is potentially in sight. There's two security remaining on Lewis's side of the board. There are two Digimon that are going to be there able to attack next turn as it stands at the moment. So it's not game on board, but it's not necessarily a million miles away at this stage, which is kind of nice. Remember, winner of this game, huge advantage. That's a good thing. So now we see Cody Hina coming down. And the turn will pass over to Lewis. And now what can Lewis do? And Lewis can see what we can see. At this stage, Lewis needs to start doing something. Lewis needs to try and get rid of that Kazamon. Unfortunately, the, the Patamon in the raising area is pretty much out of reach. But we need to try and get rid of that Digimon, try and recover a couple of cards. I mean, we've got a Jet Sylphimon in hand, it looks like. I might have missed seen that. All of those Digimon look very similar, all right? Kazumon, your Jet Silvermon, your Zephyrmon, they're all very similar at a glance. 
So what have we got here? So Tige Takaji's coming out. That's turning into a Zephyrmon. And draw a card for Evolution. Does he have any other options here? Now we do go into Jet Silphamon. I was right, there was one there. So now we see a recovery. So now we've got potentially two attacks and free security. So Kyle is quite far away from winning next turn. Is worth pointing out, Kyle could go nuts and get a bunch of hybrid out and then attack four times for the win. That is possible. Unlikely, but it is possible. But we do get rid of a Digimon while recovering one. And this is what we've been seeing since the beginning of the game. It finally looks like, hey, maybe Kyle's in a position to start closing out this game. Maybe Kyle can start getting towards a win. And Lewis is like, well, actually, funny you should mention that. No. Because now you're actually two attacks further away from winning. So what have we got here? So we are activating that reinforced memory boost, putting Lewis up to seven memory. Remember, there is a hard cap on memory of 10. You cannot go above 10. So that's, um, yeah, you're, you're almost as high as you can go here. But what's he going to do with that memory? So, looks like we're counting up cards here. Trying to see how many cards we've got. Okay. Okay, right, so now we've got TK Takashi coming out. And there's your Suzanumon. So that was, I was thinking that was coming, I couldn't quite see it. Remember Suzanumon, you can actually go from a Tamer right up into Suzanumon as long as you take 10 Tamer or hybrid cards from your hand or trash and put them at the bottom of your deck in any order. And now we are, and this is what Lewis needed, right? Lewis needed something dramatic like this. Something like a Suzanumon with security attack plus two, taking out three security cards in one go. And now Lewis got game on board next turn. We got memory boost coming out here. And at this stage, Kyle needs to do something. It is as simple as that. Kyle Kyle could win the game this turn, but it would involve evolving three tamers and attacking four times. It's possible. But it especially, you know, and you go up to seven memory of all the tamers, which is nice. But I mean it's gonna take something like or a Suzanimon of his own. Now, if Kyle can get a Suzanimon and a single hybrid, that would be enough for Kyle to close out the game. And this is what we were talking about earlier, while we had all the KG turns. At some point, a player needed to do something. Well, actually, Lewis did. You get late in the game, and at that point, Suzanimon becomes an option. And now Suzanimon is an option, and it's out. And Lewis has got game on board next turn. Suzanimon can take out three security cards in one go. And then it's just an attack to win. And Lewis has a Digimon in the raising area. So as it stands, Lewis doesn't even need Jet Silphimon. If he can attack with Suzanimon to take out the security and then just attack with Salomon after it comes out for the raising area, that's it. That's game for Lewis. So now what's Kyle got? Does Kyle have any way of preventing this? And also, you've got to start thinking about time here because as it stands, Kyle's going to lose game one. Unless he can pull it back. And that is going to be very, very awkward. So. We see cards being counted up. Hey. Do you remember what happened last turn? When we saw Lewis doing exactly this. Yeah. Seems like Kyle's got Susanna Mond coming out here as well. And this is going to be big. And this could potentially be the game. Because Lewis has got three security cards remaining. Suzanimon's got security attack plus two. So Suzanimon can get rid of all three of those security in one go. Or just swing into Suzanimon. And there we go. You get to delete any Digimon when Digivolving, which is, of course, the opposing Suzanimon. Then we see the attack with Salomon. And Kyle pulls out the victory in a very long, very tense game one. And it was very, very close. I could easily have gone Lewis's way. And it turned out, that in this matchup, you're waiting for Suzanimon. Because for, for the better part of half an hour, we there was nothing really going on. It was just very back and forth. I want to say there was nothing going on. I don't mean there was nothing happening. There was loads happening. What I mean is nothing was sticking. There were security guards being removed, but there were security guards being recovered. There were little Digimon coming out and then little Digimon being pinged. It was very much back and forth, and it was just players doing something, and then their opponent erasing what they'd done. For the better part of half an hour, and that's how this matchup goes.
And then you wait for Suzanne Umon. And generally speaking, in a regular matchup, when you're talking about this yellow hybrid deck, your opponent isn't matching you. So as you're pinging little Digimon and recovering, your opponent is not always doing the same to you. So you can whittle down those security cards as you go through the game. You end up with a slightly quicker victory. But in a mirror match, that's not happening. Just as much as you're recovering all the little pinged off security, so is your opponent. But then Suzanne Umon comes out. And you saw there, as soon as Lewis got Suzanne Umon, we basically had like one turn and the game was over. Lewis brought Suzanne on and came out and basically said, look, if you don't have your own Suzanne on this turn, I'm going to win next turn. The only sad thing for Lewis was that Kyle did. Kyle did have his own Suzanne on. And that was unfortunately enough to, to really round it out. And that is an interesting interaction because you saw that when Suzanne Mon comes out, you get to delete any of your opponent's Digimon. Only one, but any one you like. No restrictions whatsoever. Not what we see often in Digimon, but it is something we see. So if you get Suzanne Mon first, but don't win the game, your opponent can get out Suzanne Mon, pop your Suzanne Mon, and unfortunately at that stage, as we saw, that is pretty much game. So, Kyle comes out here, we get a Zorio Remoto, which goes and gets a Jet Sylphimon from the security. Still at five. Um, did Kyle forget to hatch a Digi-Egg? I can't imagine Kyle would have deliberately not done it. So, we do see a reinforced memory boost coming out here. And we've still got no Digi-Egg on Kyle's side of the board. So that's kind of an interesting one. Lewis has not got much. We've just got an Uppermon there. And we play a Tamer. And Kyle finally does go and, go and show one of those. Doesn't really matter, honestly. If you don't have a level 3 to evolve, it doesn't really matter. But... It could still it could still end up being relevant at some point. So you still want to try and hatch that as soon as possible. We're we're on game two here. It it doesn't, you know, you're not gonna trick your opponent at this stage, so Yeah. So out comes Kazamon here. Goes and grabs that one. And at this stage, things aren't looking great for Lewis, because we've not got much time for a game two. So Lewis there we so Poping over to Lewis, we get Patamon coming down. Draws a card for the evolution. Don't forget to draw an evolution. We see <laughs> we've already seen like four turns then because somebody does hard cast a tamer. But we've seen how important tamers are. Tamers are kind of like the whole, you know what, you don't know what I'm doing. If I've got tamers out, maybe it turns into a Zephyrmon, maybe it turns into a Kazimon, maybe it doesn't. But I've always got those options to get those tamers out at a moment's notice. So... Having them out is just huge. And neither player has really established much of a board presence. Up till now, it's basically just been playing Tamers. And, and that's honestly like about it. That's really all we're actually seeing here. But we do see a yellow memory boost coming down. That's going to go and get a card. And it looks like we got an Phantom on fall down mode, which is potentially going to be um, pretty gosh darn useful in the future. Of course, we've seen that coming out with recovery. Honestly, it's better when you Digivolve it up into Suzanimon, but we've seen there are ways to, to cheat that into play very nicely. So we did see a Jet Silvermon coming out here, and Lewis being a good guy there, pointing out, hang on a second, you didn't recover, which is lovely. And we see actually survives, hits into the Rapidmon. Rapidmon doesn't have enough, so that goes down. And this is lovely. At this stage, this is going really, really nicely. You know, if you can get Jet Silvermon out, you recover. You take out a security card. You don't go down. Now we've got a Phantomon fall down mode to recover again. And, you know, things like Jet Silvermon and a Phantomon fall down mode, there's no restriction. We see, we see kind of often, you know, we, we've got cards like Salomon on deletion recovers if you've got three or fewer. These cards don't have a restriction. So you can potentially just keep recovering, keep recovering, keep recovering. And, you know, we see that Kyle started on eight security, oh, sorry, on five security, has now gone all the way up to eight. That's a big deal. Because remember, Kyle won game one. Lewis is the one on the back foot here. So it really does just come down to, you know, what does Lewis do at this stage? They've got kind of 12 minutes 
to try and take down eight security and attack for the win. Except, you know, you and I both know at this stage, it's not really eight security because there's no way, there's no realistic way Lewis is taking out eight security before we see a whole bunch being popped off. However, we do see Eden's javelin coming down. Now, I think I was minus 8,000. I want a second Eden's javelin. So that is easily enough. So we saw the memory go up. Double Eden's javelin to take out the Yafanim on fall down mode. It's kind of a long way round. Generally speaking, it would be kind of lovely if you were able to do that with a little bit less effort, I think is fair to say. But I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, when it works, it works. That was, that was honestly kind of beautiful. So we do see a Zephyr on here from Kyle. It's not really what you want to hard cast, but it will do. And now Lewis here. We'll see gone and done. So he's played a Zoe or a Moto, I want to say. Sitting there at free security. And Kyle is very... I told you it was unlikely, We, you know, that at this stage, with how long game one took, we might not see a, a completed a completed series. But Kyle is really rushing ahead here. We've got Kazimon coming out. We've got Jet Silvermon for another recovery. And the real difference in this game, Kyle's hitting his recovery cards and Lewis isn't. Kyle's hitting Jet Silvermon at... Ooh, Eden's Javelin, though. That's going to take one of them down, obviously, Jet Silvermon. Kyle's been able to hit his recovery cards quite nicely. He was up to nine security already. Lewis hasn't. So Kyle's just doing what Yellow Hybrid does. Kyle's not doing these gigantic swings. You know, not until Suzanimon comes out. We are poking away. We're taking out a little bit of security here or there. But actually, if your opponent isn't recovering, that's the big difference from game one. In game one, Lewis was recovering. So we didn't see this. And Lewis was pinging. But in this game, Lewis hasn't had the start. He's not had Digimon out to ping. He's not hit his recovery cards. So now we're seeing, you know, this yellow hybrid do what it does against a regular deck. It's pinging away security here and there, getting the odd one while recovering. And now, you know, whereas in the game one, we often saw like a six to six security score. Now we're seeing a nine to two. Well, that's a huge difference. And it means that, you know, when you play something like TK Takaishi, you're searching nine cards. We've got 50 card decks here, right? So if you're searching through nine cards, that's a huge amount of cards to actually search through. It means you're going to be able to grab those cards that you want so much more easily. So it looks like we're going over to Lewis now. Have we passed over to Lewis? And Lewis got a giant hand. We know Lewis got a giant hand because we keep seeing those Eden Javelin come down. But what's he doing with it? Because honestly, right, at this stage, Lewis is on the verge of losing this game. And remember, Lewis lost game one, needs to win. Now, we do see a Rapidmon coming down. So that's going to be able to not quite ping the Zephyrmon. But what you could do is... Yeah, so we've got an attack coming out here. Yeah, so what we're doing is we're attacking... And as we attack, we ping with the Tamer. And we see it with Cody Hina. We see it with a double Tamer here. You TK Takaishi and Kari Kamiya. Either one can ping when you attack. TK and Kari ping for one. Cody pings for two. Doesn't really matter. Either way, you get the deletion as you go and take out a security card. And that makes all the difference. But let's not pretend that that's a huge swing in the game. Kyle's still got eight security remaining. Kyle is still absolutely on the front foot here. So, where are we? What's the play? We do see a yellow memory boost coming down. Let's you grab a you know, Digimon from the top four. Jess Hilfimon. It's kind of an obvious one, honestly, because it's phenomenal. And we do have a Zephyrmon, so that Jet Silvermon can be played next turn. So if I'm Kyle here, I'm thinking, right, let's try and get rid of that Zephyrmon. Because I know my opponent can play Jet Silvermon for, like, one memory, and that's going to be able to recover as well, and that's going to be a, a, a pretty big deal. So now we see Rapidmon coming down. 
get Zephyrmon down to 1,000 remaining. But there isn't a Tamer to ping that last 1,000. There's no Cody Hina. There's no Kike to Kaishi and Kari Kamiya, which is what we've been seeing him do so far. So that does mean you have to use Rapidmon to attack in, and that's not really what you're looking for. What would be ideal here would be using one of those Tamers to ping the last 1,000 off while you took out of security. That's what we've been seeing, you know, those yellow players doing in round two and here in round three. That's what we've been going for. Having to use your attacks to not take out security, that's a very different situation. We do see an evolution with Zephyrmon and an attack into an Eden's Javelin, which we've seen quite a lot so far. Got to imagine it's going to take out that Rapidmon, and it absolutely does. Remember, Rapidmon's got Armor Purge, but we never see it coming in. You know, in theory, when you would be deleted, you trash the top card, you're left there with a level 3, you carry on as normal. The thing is, you're not doing that. You're lowering power, and that's not the same thing. So that means that you can just go straight through. And, you know, we, we've not really, we've seen so much Rapidmon on stream so far, and we've not actually seen Armor Purge really coming out at all, which is, um, well, a little bit sad. So we've got about five minutes remaining here. Lewis has got one security remaining. Kyle, is he still at eight? Six, seven, eight. Yeah, so we are still at eight with Kyle. And, I mean, this is a one-sided game at this stage. This is not like game one. Game one was a really cagey back and forth, buying time, buying time, buying time before the, I suppose, probably inevitable Suzanumon fight. That has not been this game. This game is very much Lewis struggling to keep up and Kyle really rushing ahead. And we're getting to the stage here where with five minutes remaining, I don't really know what Lewis's plan of action here is. Sure, some recovery would be nice, but you'll notice, you know, Lewis is going to have to go into a level four before you can go into Jet Selfie Mom. And honestly, you know, Kyle's potentially got game on board. If Kyle's got a single hybrid Digimon in his hand, all he needs to do next turn is attack with Zephyrmon, hybrid up, attack, boom, there's the win. So we get Zephyrmon, Lewis goes to zero memory. We now see Salomon Digivolving up, draws a card on Digivolution. But that's in the breeding area, that's not going to do too much now. Jet Sylphimon does recover, so that's huge. And Kyle only has one Tamer on the board, so there will not be a win from Kyle next turn. But doesn't this just have the feeling of Lewis... Keeping going for another couple of turns. It doesn't feel at this stage like Lewis is building up to win the game. It feels like Lewis is just kind of hanging on. Because there is a huge gap here. Now, that's not to say it couldn't turn into this. Because now we've got a second Digimon out for Lewis. Lewis's board is actually better than Kyle's at this stage. And we do see another recovery with Jet Silphimon. So, this is not bad from Lewis. And this can happen. We could see Lewis building up here. All we need is a couple more recovery from Lewis, couple little pings into the security, and then all of a sudden, we're actually quite even. No, we're not there yet. Let's be super clear. We are not there yet. Kyle is very much ahead. Kyle won game one. And there's no way Lewis wins the best of three series at this stage. That is not happening. But what we could see here is that we could see Lewis... You know, potentially it would be difficult, but potentially coming back and taking a game too. That is possible. So where are we? So Kyle here, both players, as we've seen for the entire match here with gigantic hands, with a load of cards. We do see a memory boost coming down. That's going to go and grab a Digimon. You imagine, yeah, Jess, it's, it's pretty much always Jet Silphimon, okay? If you see that one, it's probably going to be that one. Now, we do see Cody Hina coming down. And, and Kyle's a way away from winning at this stage. Kyle needs four attacks. And realistically, there's maybe three on the board if both Tamers can get hybrid. And that's like the best case scenario. So, and if Lewis can start pinging here... Might end up giving up a bunch of Digimon, but this is worth it. So, Salomon pings and hits a Salomon and goes away. But there's a recovery because you had three or fewer security. And Lewis might actually be bringing this back. We could see this game evening up pretty quickly at this stage. This could be kind of cool. So, we've got two Jet Silvermon out. Now comes down Cody Hina. 
This is kind of big. And we see Jet Silphimon hitting in. Oh, it's a Phantom on fall down mode. That one's gone down hard. But now, you know, a minute ago, we had like an 8 to 2 security or something. Now we see a Phantom on fall down mode coming up. We're at 6 to 5 security. We might actually see Lewis jump ahead in this game. And this is kind of what Yellow Hybrid does. It's one of the reasons why it's such a good deck. Why is he so much play? Like, a few minutes ago, Kyle had eight security and Lewis had like two. And now Kyle's got six. Lewis has got five. But Lewis has got in the Phantom on fall down mode sitting there. And is there a world in which we try and get a Suzanumon out? And it's not generally the way you play it. You know, we saw in game one. Generally, what players are trying to do is kind of cheat Suzanumon out onto a Tamer and then get it out far more easily. But. There is a possibility here. Now, it's not going to work. We've seen this before. Rapidmon minus this five to a Phanamon. And then you attack into it. Cody Hina brings it from seven down to five. Rapidmon is a 6,000. We've seen Kyle do exactly that in a previous game. Rapidmon is able to take out a Phanamon fall down mode. And this is something we see quite a lot. These skills that all these yellow Digimon have that lower power. It's not always about just deleting Digimon. Sometimes what you're trying to do is just bring the power down low enough that you can delete it with one of your own Digimon. Rapidmon's got 6,000 power. Phanamon's got 12. But if you can mine a seven, you can defeat it with a rapid one, which is exactly what happened. Now we see Anita's javelin taken out of Passamon here. And now, almost impossibly, we're kind of right back where we were in game one. Because as it stands, we've got Lewis on six memory. We've got uh, sorry, five. We've got Kyle on six memory. Both players have got two tamers out, but not really many Digimon. There is no end to this game in sight. There was a window, right? There was a window in this game where Kyle was able to actually go ahead and win, where Kyle was on the verge. But I told you, although it didn't look likely at the time, there's always a possibility that these yellow hybrid decks can go. Little bit of recovery, couple little pings, and now all of a sudden, we're even. And now... You know, I believe we're now into the end of round timing. So that's three turns or five minutes, whichever elapses first. But I'm going to spoil the surprise for you right here. There's not going to be a winner in this game. No one's decking out and no one is running their opponent out of security. Uh, unless we see a Suzanumon. And it is, I mean, Lewis is bringing out Suzanumon now. So... In theory, Lewis has one more turn. So this is kind of, you know, Lewis's turn, then Kyle has a turn, then Lewis will have one more turn. Maybe there's a possibility. Oh, no, but Suzanimon can't attack. Doesn't have Blitz. So maybe... See, the problem here is Suzanimon can take out free security, and then Patamon can potentially take out one, and Carrie Camille can potentially evolve and take out one, but that's still taking out five out of six security. I still don't believe... Now, it also depends on exactly when time was called and who has which turns remaining. I'm afraid I don't have that exact information, and for that, I apologize. But I don't... I mean, I'm fairly sure... Oh, Suzanimon comes out again. Lewis does play two of them. I mean, in, unless Kyle... Brings out a Suzanimon right now. So I believe Lewis was turn zero. Kyle was turn one. So I think this is Lewis's last turn of the game. But Suzanimon's gone. So yeah, that was Wyvern's Breath, I should have said. Wyvern's Breath came down. Minus 15,000 power to a Digimon. So at, at this stage, right, there's no Suzanimon on the board. Now there is actually, if, I believe Kyle's got one more turn. Kyle couldn't... Oh, see, it's recovery. I, right, I believe it is still possible for Kyle to win the game. Now, what it would take is Suzanimon... Oh, no, it's over. Because I was thinking Suzanimon could potentially take out free security. TK Takaishi could evolve up and take out a fourth. And then Salomon could potentially attack. But no, there's, there's six... It's not happening. It's kind of like, you know, maybe there's a tiny little bit of a chance here or there if you can do giant swings with Suzanimon. But 
It's not working, unfortunately. And that means that game two isn't going to end. And Kyle won game one, which I believe makes Kyle the winner of the match. I will double check and let you know at the beginning of the next round. But this game two, and we, we, we spotted this a mile off, right? This is a mirror match that doesn't have a quick resolution. The whole point of this deck is to ping off a little bit of security here or there. But really, it's just kind of keep alive, ping off a little bit of security here or there and win in a fairly slow game. When both players are trying to do that, you end up with kind of like a 30 minute game one and a 30 minute game two. We don't have an hour for these rounds. So game one took a very long time. Game two... Unless I'm missing something, I really don't see any situation here where either player can realistically take all the prizes. I mean, Lewis has no Suzanimon left. Both of them are in the trash. Kyle does only have one Suzanimon in the deck. Maybe can find it. But, and maybe comes out? But see, even then, the fact that there are five security... Yeah, I don't believe it's possible at this stage. So we do see the Patamon getting pinged. The Afanamon fall down mode is going down from an Eden's Javelin. But it looks like game two is unfortunately not going there. So we have a 1-0 victory for Kyle. And that is going to put Kyle up to 3-0 in the tournament. Congratulations to Kyle. Commiserations to Lewis. Unfortunately, that's what we see. And I mean, that comeback from Lewis in that second game was a thing of absolute beauty. Lewis looked completely out of it halfway through that game and yet just brought it back and, and became, you know, a really close game in the end. But unfortunately, it was one of those situations where had there been more time, there's absolutely a possibility Lewis could have won that game. Although having both Suzanne on in the trash was a big deal. It may have been too much to come back from. Regardless, we've had a very long round, a very interesting round. And the good news is we're only three rounds in. We got up to eight today. So grab yourselves a nice cold beverage. Grab yourselves a little bit of a break. But we went to time. So round four is coming up very, very shortly. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>